Hello, hello everyone, this is Nocturne, and welcome to what I think is going to be the first of at least a few build tour videos of modded Minecraft, as you can plainly see. And for those of you paying attention and have already read the title of this video, you probably have at least somewhat of an idea of what I'd like to show off today. Yes, oh yes, a nuclear reactor powered quarry. And for those of you out there who have no idea what I'm talking about because you've not got it into mods, that's okay. I'll take it kind of slow at first, just kind of show off the build, and then maybe get a little more technical for those of you who know a bit more about what's going on with the mods that I'm using and give you guys some of the details and the breakdown of how I made it and how it works. So, I think first and foremost, let's hop into the Miscraft Age where I have it built and we can start taking a look at... Yes, the nuclear reactor. And ignore the world loading in the background, because what we want to see is right here. Oh yes, this is the Industrial Craft nuclear reactor. And as you might notice, it is completely unshielded, because this is an age strictly devoted to mining, so if it blows up, it would probably look really cool. <laughs> Ah uh, yes, the quarry is over there and we will get to it in a second. So first and foremost, reactor creates power. Industrial craft power, so energy units per tick. The energy units travel over to the forestry engines and generate minecraft jewels for build craft. And then over here we have the energy tesseract from thermal expansion that then sends power, teleported power, over to the quarry over there. And back here we've got a little bit of wireless redstone and a couple red power tube logic gates setting up our control system. And I will show you guys how all that works once we go take a look at the quarry. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and fly over here with my amazing gravity chest plate and show you guys the current state of the quarry. I haven't run it very much because I wanted to be able to show off a little before and after for you guys. So there might be a slight update to this video in a few days or a week showing just what it looks like once it's all been dug out. Now I think I'm going to throw up a little screenshot right now of how it looked after about 60 to, oh I don't know, five minutes of running. This is how it looks after running for I'd say about 15 minutes. So for those of you well, before we get into that, let me just kind of go ahead and show off this piece. So here's the quarry. Here's the other side of the energy tesseract, where the energy is received from all the setup over there. Standard piping going out into an ender chest, and while I realized I could have put the ender chest right next to it for output, I wanted to do something fancy with a logic gate. And here we see the nuclear control display panel showing the current settings of the reactor. As you can see, it is currently off, so nothing special there. And here we have the remote thermal monitor, which at the moment is kind of useless because that reactor is a fully stable one. It will never generate excess heat. But when I move on to doing other reactor designs and just playing around with that, this might come in handy and serves as part of our control mechanism. So. I think that's kind of the basics. There's a little more to what's on the other side of this ender chest, which I'll go into in a little bit. But I think first, I'd like to kind of show you guys just how ridiculously fast this nuclear-powered quarry runs. And while we're doing that, let me go ahead and talk some of you guys through. The original Buildcraft quarries used to cap out at 9 Minecraft jewels per tick. And those were some pretty fast quarries. But with my current setup, I've calculated that that reactor and the conversion setup with the forestry engines and then the energy loss over the tesseract is providing me roughly 45 minecraft joules per tick for a five times faster than the old max limit. And while I have heard in the past from others including people like say Direwolf who do all those wonderful spotlights the alleged max is 60 or 75 Minecraft Joules, but if you take this multimeter from Thermal Expansion and you check the quarry... Ah, I probably need to turn it on. Let's go ahead and do that. So we can go ahead and check out all the awesome 
reverse the redstone signal, wait for the quarry to come on, and let's run on over and see if we can't watch this thing go a little crazy, ticking up everything. And mind you, it's still speeding up. So this is running, I'd say, about 60% power. I've actually clocked it, and the normal walking speed of a character in Minecraft is some meters per second. At full speed, this thing is faster than a Minecraft character walking. So it's kind of ridiculously fast. And here we can see the reactor monitor panel showing that we are currently getting 240 EU per tick out of that reactor. And because I've been doing a bunch of testing with it, it's not at full power or remaining power. <laughs> Just look at that thing in the background. Wow. Uh, it's about a five and a half hour run. Now, I believe we can go ahead and do this now that it's running. Oh, really? They took that out. Hmm. Okay, I guess that was a recent update in Thermal Expansion. I used to be able to click on this, and it was telling me that this machine was requesting 500 Minecraft jewels per tick, which is why I brought it up. It seemed kind of wow and contradictory to the 60 or 70. But still, this thing running, let's go take a look. Okay. Wait for it to come down and do the next piece. I see this is me walking. I'm trying to keep up with it, and I can't. <laughs> so, the recent changes in Buildcraft to make these quarries faster and ex accept more energy is just absolutely amazing. So I think while we let this run for a little bit, uh, let me go ahead and walk you through some of the more technical pieces of what we've got going on here. Now, you saw the wireless redstone and red power to logic gates that I had, and yeah, just look how fast that stuff's spitting stuff out. I mean, that's par partially the golden pipes, but... Wow. <laughs> so, here, this is the remote thermal monitor, and as I said, based on the reactor design I'm using, it's 100% stable, so as you can see, temperature is zero. And it will pretty much stay that way, as I've got it perfectly cooled. So this thing is currently set to emit, or turn off, a redstone signal in this situation, if it ever goes over 3000 degrees. And, like I said, not going to happen, but this is our first control. If this thing is giving a redstone signal, that means we are safe to proceed for this control. And over here, I've got a buildcraft logic gate monitoring this ender chest, set to, if the inventory is full, emit a redstone signal. Very simple. Has to do with the way I've got my red power sorting system working back in my own personal Minecraft age. So if the redstone signal ever turns on, it will start transmitting across this wireless redstone transmitter here. And if we go back and take a look, we can take a look and see just how this logic setup works. This here, frequency 210, is our remote thermal monitor. And because it is within safe bounds of temperature, it is transmitting power. And this here is our... My system is backstuffed and I've got nothing going on, so the quarry chest is full. It is currently off, but we are actually sending through a NOT gate, which is going to invert the signal. And the NOT gate is really just a nice compact way of doing this. And both of those are transmitting into an AND gate. So if we have the temperature is safe and the chest is not full, turn on the reactor. And here is the reactor design I went with. I'm pretty sure this could be improved upon a little bit, but as you can see, it is 100% stable no excess temperature, and I'm actually using Greg Tech double plutonium cells for this, which is why I'm getting so much out of just dual cells. And I will say this was very copper expensive just for going all the way to up to these gold heat vents. So, like I said, getting a little more technical, and this is actually just a visual bug. These engines are actually running. So the way I found to fix this just flick the redstone, and there you go. The forestry engines are now running. These are electrical engines from forestry. They convert industrial craft EU per tick into build craft Minecraft jewel per tick. And they are currently 
I believe set up to about the maximum overclock that you can do with the electrical circuits and the, uh, what is it, the electron tubes. Although I'm not entirely certain with the new Forestry 2.0 if you can go any higher, but they are currently running at 10 Minecraft joules output per tick and taking in 35 EU per tick. 35 EU per tick times 6 equals, yes that's right, 290. So this is perfectly absorbing every last EU per tick and converting it all into Minecraft jewels. Right into our energy tesseract, which is running on frequency 210, which, like I said, is sending things over that way. And while I realize I probably don't need this lever here, I just kind of like it. So all six of these are running the exact same kind of circuit board, getting power from the reactor and tesseracting it on over. And unfortunately, energy tesseracts come with a pretty high cost for teleporting your power across dimensions, through dimensional space, the ether, if you will. And that is 25% energy loss. So these six electrical engines over there are producing 60 EU per tick, but because we are sending it through the tesseract, we're actually only getting 45, hence my original calculation from before. But still, this is ridiculously fast and I couldn't have asked for anything more amazing. And take a look at this. We are already digging down, I believe this is a brand new layer since I just started recording this little video for you guys. And as I said, I can show you guys a little bit of how things are working on the other side. Excuse my flying around, just makes things a little easier for me. We can see the sorting system is keeping up with things quite well although I might run into a problem with my basalt cobblestone. And that's why I set up this little safety measure. And now if we head back to my own little personal age, you can see I've actually got this set up here, which is actually the same as the chest full frequency. It's sort of my emergency shutoff. So I can just flip that on, the NOT gate gets flipped, the AND gate loses one of its true signals, and the, the reactor goes off. Now, if we go ahead and head downstairs, we can check out how things are working down here. Down here is where I've actually got my storage system. It pretty much is set up to store all sorts of stuff and even has a bit of an overflow, which I might actually need to turn off my quarry before I finish recording this little video because, uh, well, we already filled up our basalt chest. But let's not worry about that right now. Let us check out the way this system is working back here. This is the other side of the under chest. And so if there's ever an overflow in my sorting system and some chest can't get filled and the sorting machines ever back stuff, then the chest will fill and as you saw on the other end, my little safety mechanism should kick in and keep anything from overflowing and causing all sorts of havoc on a server because, well, havoc is pretty easy to wreak when you are messing with quarries. And to continue just a little bit over this way, you can see all the excess basalt is actually heading down this way, and this will be a perfect time for me to actually go ahead and turn on my new recycler system. As we hop down here and take a look at our overflow chest for the system. And let me go ahead and steal some of these so I can actually tell my filter Please start grabbing that stuff. And we've got another energy chest set up here just to make things a little more simple. And go ahead and flip on the timer. And tick. Did I slow this way down? I did. Let me fix that right now. And we can start pulling out one basalt cobble at a time, which I could probably easily up later on. But for the moment, and for the demonstration purpose of this video, it is perfectly fine. So if we head on through here, we can check out the little recycler setup I have over here. Okay, so now we've got basalt coming into here once per second. And we've got a retriever set up with five recyclers, another retriever, and an auto crafting table set to make scrap boxes. So let's see how this works. Flip it on. Wait for it to tick. I've actually got this set to 10 because I didn't think I was going to need it that often. So let's go ahead and speed this guy up. And he will start spitting out all the things he's collecting. 
into the nearest adjacent inventory. And as you can see, the recyclers are overclocked pretty well, so they should be able to keep up with the output of this ridiculously fast quarry. Although it should be fairly easy to craft a few more, as you saw on my auto crafting system, I've actually got overclockers set up in there. Now, the scrap will be brought out into here. I've got a little autarkic gate set to, as I said, produce scrap boxes. And bam, scrap boxes. So, a little bit of a uh, all the mods in one place system going on here, but I think it was a lot of fun to build. And while some of it certainly could have been a little more efficient in cases, it's at that point in a map that you've got so many resources, it just becomes a, you know what, this could be fun. And you know what, it was. And even to some extent, I kind of feel like this was just a bit of an experimentation. How many mods can I get working together? And is it actually possible to power a quarry with a nuclear reactor? And as you guys can see, yes, yes you can. Well, I think that's going to about wrap it up for me for this little video. I think we're hitting close to the 20 minute mark, depending on how I edit things up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little build video, and if you guys want any more information or anything else for me to go in depth, maybe make another tutorial build video or any other questions you might have, feel free to let me know in the comments below. And if you guys want to take a little more time and examine my nuclear reactor design, I can actually post a link in the video description to the industrial craft reactor planner that they have online. Uh, this is actually something I came up with myself, and I'm kind of proud with it for being my very first nuclear reactor. So, this has been Nocturne, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys again in the next little build door video. See you later.